People often say it doesn't matter what controller you use, but it does to me, and here's why. But first, coffee. All right, so today's coffee is India, A-P-A-A. -A -A. I've had this coffee before, but I can't remember exactly how it tastes. I know that it's quite a strong one. I know that I like it. And that's all that matters, right? As long as it's the coffee that you like. Just like it doesn't matter really what it is, as long as it's the controller that you like. So recently I was having a conversation with a friend about controllers. The conversation went along the lines of, you know, it really doesn't matter what controller you use. You know, you can use pad or you can use a hitbox or a mixbox or an arcade stick. Really, as long as you are using whatever works for you and helps you win. But then I think I made some sort of quick joke. I was just like, ew, people who use pad are just like, not, not, this, it's just not for me. And I was trying to figure out why did I think that way? And at that moment, I realized I'm not playing because I like this game and I just will do anything it takes to win. I play games because I like to play with arcade sticks. The tool is actually like the most important feature of the game for me. It's the point of contact between the game and myself, which makes the most difference, by the way. Let's grind! And so in that passing comment where I was basically trying to say, I don't want to play on pad, Ugh, there's just something about it that just doesn't, doesn't bode well with me. And it was supposed to be a joke, but then I was like, in that moment, I was just like, Zzz, and you see that electric bolt acro go across your head. The reason I am playing these games and enjoying these games is because I love stick. This is a home consumer version of the thing that you can that you used to be able to get at arcade game centers. I mean, in Japan they still have them, and you know, in, in America I think they've still got some arcades, a, f a few arcades here and there. In my mind, it is synonymous with games and game centers. You go to a game center and there will be some device that you interact with and it becomes the point of contact between you and this other world. Now in more recent years we've got things like touch screens or games where they have a camera that like does motion capture to see how you're dancing, stuff like that. And those are new ways to feel like you're being taken directly into the game, like your whole body's going into the game. But in games like where they use a camera, there's no point of touch, there's no haptic feedback. And that's why the arcade stick is one of the most important parts of the gaming experience for me because it just feels very, very different to playing with a controller. Whoops! When you play with a controller, it's all very tactile like this, you're pressing all the buttons like so, and so your fingers are very busy. But with an arcade stick, it's like, you like wangle your entire arm, you get your whole body into it, the whole experience is, is very, very physical. And so I realized that I wasn't really just choosing a tool that was going to make it easier to win because actually winning isn't really my goal. I made a video last year when I was saying that I finally got back into video games. Like clearly back then what I discovered was that fighting games in particular helped me scratch this itch where I wasn't feeling progression in my life. Progression is a bit of an abstract concept anyway. Maybe progression doesn't really exist. It's just something that the human mind needs to believe that it is doing. Otherwise, it finds it difficult to go to the next day. Like, why bother going to the next day if it's just gonna be like today? But if you have a concept like progression, like tomorrow is going to be different because whatever this imaginary line is in our lives, I'm going to be a little bit further along it. And that's what I was missing from a lot of the ways, basically just the way that I was living my life at the time, you know, career-wise, hobby-wise, musically-wise, creative-wise, gaming-wise. I wasn't really going anywhere in a linear fashion. Perhaps I was expanding my sphere of knowledge, right? Like a, like a cloud of knowledge. I was going into new areas, new, expanding my boundaries. I, I was traveling to new worlds and new places through new experiences all the time. But I think there is something particularly attractive to the human mind about the idea of being on a line and going along it. And so when I discovered that fighting games really scratched that itch, you know, I for sure knew that winning was going to be a part of knowing how much further I had progressed. Like, if you win more frequently, then you'll feel like you have made more progression doesn't mean that winning is progression, but it's one of those markers that helps you feel like you did progress a bit. So winning's a part of it, but it's not the goal. Definitely the goal, and what really got me back into fighting games, was having these physical devices. Even, like, for, for example, I picked this one up as well. This is like the Blaze Blue Cross Tag 
stick. I already have a stick, so why am I buying another one? It's just like, oh well clearly, clearly, even though this one was fine as it was, I just liked the idea of having a new tool, a new way of interacting with this property that I really enjoy, this video game. So I was thinking about the fact that arcade sticks are so important to me in fighting games, to the point that even though I'm not particularly good at the game, like it was really important to me that I still can I still continued to play on stick. Because the reason that I'm playing the game at all was because I enjoy the interaction, the tactile feedback of the clickiness of the stick and the smacking of these these buttons. And I started to realize that this actually extends to pretty much every aspect of my life, regardless of whether it's related to gaming, creativity, you know, art and music, or just general gizmos and gadgets. Especially if you watch this channel, you'll see there's plenty of gizmos and gadgets always appearing on the channel. And so I realized that when I traced it back to, for, for example, yo-yoing, right? There was a time when I was really into yo-yos. I actually wasn't so obsessed with the idea of being the best at yo-yoing and doing the techniques. I really just liked the idea of having an expensive yo-yo with a ball-bearing axle in the middle. That was actually really, really important to me. That was something that I had always wanted as a kid as well. I had seen these expensive yo-yos with all these cool gizmos and technology built into them. And then I think about how it comes with art as well. And yes, I like drawing, and I want to be good at drawing more than I am <laughs> good at just buying gizmos. But having a really cool tablet was a really important aspect for me, for drawing, to the point that, yes, I could practice just being great at drawing with a pencil, but, but it wasn't really what I wanted to do. What I wanted to be do, what I wanted to do was be good at manipulating this digital device to make art. That's what was exciting about it. And it even goes as far as music as well. The real origin of all of this is the fact that I was encouraged to try music as a child, and so I was playing things like the flute, or the trombone, or percussion. And for every single one, there's plenty of gizmos and gadgets that come with it. For example, if you play a brass instrument, you can get a mute. Or if you play percussion, there's electric versions of percussion instruments, or there's all various different types of sticks. If you play the violin, there's different types of instruments and different types of bow that you can buy. There's always ways to customize, and the customization aspect became really important to me and just the fact that you could make the device your own was really important. You know, come to think of it, now that I'm making a coffee video about this, it actually has just occurred to me that also the reason that I make coffee the way that I do, using a drip filter, this Balmuda kettle, which has a pouring spout, the reason I make the coffee this way is because I enjoy the ritual of getting all of these appliances together preparing the coffee, well, choosing the coffee, preparing the coffee, grinding it and all that, and then pouring it over and then enjoying it. It's an important ritual for me. And it's such a satisfying ritual. And that's like a whole meal. It's like a hearty pub dinner. So if you took these tools away from me when I was making coffee, for example, it has been suggested, why don't you try tea? Why don't you use a French press? Have you tried an aero press? And for all of these things, I really appreciate the suggestions. I must have at some point given you the idea that the only reason I'm here is because I love coffee. And although I do love coffee, perhaps what I love more is making the coffee and making the coffee with a drip filter. And if I were to do it with a cafetiere, there's something about the cafetiere, the French press rather, where you know you just put it in and you just watch the coffee just kind of brew itself. And then when it's done, you just plunge it down. It's like, wait two minutes, the coffee is done. But for drip coffee, because there is an element of mastery, I'm not saying that I've mastered it, but because there's an element there that you can master, I find it really addictive and fun to do. Well, it's addictive because it's caffeine as well. And so it all boils down to tools. I'm pretty sure that I understand that my motivating factor for almost all of my hobbies, whether it's gaming, art, music, is that I really am very interested in the tools, and the reason I'm interested in tools is because I am obsessed with mastery. 
So if I were in a situation where it turns out that I'm actually better at playing Street Fighter on something like a DualShock 4, right? Like, oh wow, I'm actually like going to tournaments and actually winning matches now because I've switched over to pad. Yeah, I'd be lying if I'd said I wouldn't be happy about winning matches, but I would always be more, more than my feeling of being happy about winning matches. I would be more upset about the fact that I didn't manage mastery of the tool that I had chosen. And this is the tool that I had chosen. And the cause clearly is because I played a lot of music. The thing about instruments is that they can be mastered. So it's not really that I'm obsessed with tools. It's like I'm obsessed with things that can be mastered. I think I said this when I went to a film academy. I actually went to pitch my music. I was like, hey, please use my music in your movies. I think what I said to them at the end of the pitch was, I'm doing a master's degree in how to write this music because I want to be because I want to master it, but essentially, more than mastering music, I'm kind of more interested in just doing as many master's degrees as possible. So, I've got a master's in, like, sonic arts, but I'm also going to have this master's in traditional composition, and then basically, I'm probably going to come and do your master's next as well. And someone actually came and asked me later, they're like, were you serious? Are you actually going to come and join our school and do our master's later? I was like, if they can give me the funding to do it, because I had, I had a knack for finding funding at the time. Another story for another time. But essentially, I'm obsessed with mastery, anything that can be mastered. Activities where the point isn't mastery. So the point is to be casual and just to spend time and so that you're not bored. I just really can't get into those things. But I can see where actually the majority of people, so we're not talking about like hardcore gamers, we're talking about people who play games casually because they need to just spend some time so this 40 minute train journey isn't as boring. I can totally understand why that sort of thing is better for them. They don't want to be spending huge amounts of, you know, unreasonable amounts of time trying to master this one thing, which let's face it, isn't actually that relevant anymore. There was actually a really interesting doctorate thesis that was presented to us while I was doing my degree. And it was about creating musical instruments that can't be mastered. So it was like the opposite of every instrument that had ever been, right? Because you can call this an instrument as well, right? It's an instrument of destruction, I guess. It's an, it's an instrument of fighting destruction. But the thesis was about creating an instrument which can't be mastered. No matter how hard you try, all you can do is explore with it and be creative with it and try new things with it. So it's the opposite of what I was saying. I really want a linear path so I can see my progress along it. But the reality is what I'm actually doing is just expanding my horizons into different spheres. So I've got my current sphere, but there's the fighting game sphere over here. There's the art sphere over there. There's a music sphere. There's the YouTube video making sphere. I'm expanding, but I'm not progressing but I want to feel like I'm progressing. And so if that gives you any kind of insight into what it is I like to do, and what is the lifeblood of maybe this channel, or live streams, or gaming in general for me, or creativity in general for me, it's every any time that I see something that can be mastered, I become very interested. And usually the way to mastery is through skilled manipulation of an instrument. And that's really what this is. It's not about winning. For me, it's about seeing something that can be done, something that I can't currently do, but if I take the right steps, I can find out whether I am capable of reaching that point. Currently, that road for me is through fighting games, and it could have been <laughs> any other game, to be honest. There is in probably most genres of games apart from the ones that are for casual time spending. There is an element of mastery that you can follow. There was one of these streams where Umehara Daigo, like super famous Street Fighter player, was talking about skill levels and people playing games and all the things related to it. But there's one point that he made about people who gamble. Why do people gamble? He explained it really well when he said, that people who play games, like fighting games for example, or first person shooter games, anything, or compete in sports, is because it feels like that's what they're good at. They're good at skilled mastery of a specific activity. But people who gamble, they don't see themselves as people who lack 
a skill or lack mastery of anything. What they just see themselves as is people who have great luck. They actually believe that they have a higher luck level. Like in an RPG, you like choose your stats. You've got attack stats, defense stats, luck stats. They actually believe they are more lucky. They are luckier than other people. And so when they go to gamble, they don't go, this is because I can't do other things. They do, they do it because they believe they have a higher chance of making money and winning at gambling than other people do. This is what they are good at. And so they excel at it. They should do what they excel at. It just so happens that the chances are against you in gambling. It has been rigged. I think it's been proven multiple times that gambling is basically rigged so that the house always wins, which makes sense because if the house doesn't always win, then gam that, that gambling casino will end. But anyway, this isn't a video about comparing gambling and the video game worlds. That's a very complex topic, but I thought it was really interesting about how he was saying that gamblers don't see themselves as people who can't. They see themselves as people who can, but in an area that maybe other people are not particularly good at. And I completely forgot about skateboarding, but there was a time when I saw skateboarding and I didn't just see it as, oh, a fun thing to do that would make me look cool. There was nothing about trying to look cool with skateboarding. <laughs> for me personally, maybe for a lot of other people, it's to look cool and that's fine. But personally, I saw the skateboard as this weird, very simple device, you know? It's a concave piece of wood with four wheels on it. And why is it that so many people can figure out how to make it jump, and I can't. And it, I, it really, really bothered me because in my mind I felt like I should be able to do this. And I've, I eventually was able to get it to jump, but for various other health reasons, I'm not doing a lot of skating right now. That's besides the point. Skating was another one where I saw something that could be mastered and that I hadn't mastered. It was an area with a line of progression that I could take steps upon, just like fighting games just like music, just like art. But yeah, obviously it's not like that for everyone. For some people, really, it is about winning. It's not about the tools, and that's totally fine. But the reason I'm in it, I'm very, it's very clear to me, is that I like tools, and I like to master those tools. And to win without the tool would not be winning at all, really, in my opinion, for, for me. Anyway, how about you? Do you find that the tool is actually really, really important to you. Perhaps you're into cars, motorbikes, cycling. Perhaps you're into running. You like to buy really expensive shoes. Or maybe you're into fighting games. You like to buy really expensive arcade sticks. This is actually quite an inexpensive one by comparison. Do you find that the tool is really, really important to you? And that if you took the tool away, maybe you wouldn't do the activity at all? I'm very keen to know because for me, it probably is at least 50% or more the tool. And if I didn't have the tool, probably wouldn't do it at all, to be honest. So yeah, don't forget to comment, subscribe, share the links and all that great stuff. Don't forget to check out the live streams, usually in the community page. I've got a little schedule up that tells you where and when you can find my live streams. I'll be doing that as well, in addition to making normal videos. Become a YouTube member. We've started the membership system so you can get custom emoji. We'll be doing exclusive membership live streams, but we haven't done one yet, but that's going to come up soon. So if you become a member, then we'll, I'll, I'll send you the link where we can have like a members only live stream. But yeah, see you in the next video or the next live stream. Bye.